for myself and for the world is to explore what I call fundamental reality. Do we have a soul? Is there a God? Mm. Uh, are we just a speck of dust in an infinite uh, void somewhere in the junkyard of infinity? If God exists, then does God care about us? What happens mm. to us after we die? So this is what I'm exploring right now. Basement Banter, live with Jay Sean. Hello. Hello. Sir. How are you? Hello. Great Marie, to see you guys. See you. <clears throat> Absolutely. Thank so you nice so to much. be here with you. Thanks for joining us. I don't know if you, nice to if be you, with you. Um, if you were just watching, so this, this person, lovely lady next to me, who makes me look better, is my wife. Yeah, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Tara. And uh, did you hear what she was saying about the, the yoga studio? Yeah, studio? I did. Okay, I amazing. Did. Amazing. So she's super excited to be talking to you as well today. And first of all, thank you for making time for us. Sure, sure. I don't even understand how you find time in the day. What, what time do you wake up? Jay, only busy people have time. Only busy people have time. Okay, explain this one to me. Remember that. All right. It's only the, busy people have people, time. It's the people who, who say, I don't have time, that don't have time. Right. If people say I'm too busy, I don't have time. Then that's then what you get. Have I have, I have eternity. I love that. What, what's your, what's a typical day like for you, um, Mr. Sorry, can, do, should I refer to you as Dr. Chopra? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay. Doesn't matter. Okay. Um, so what time do you wake up? What's your first thing? What do you get on? What's the first thing you do when you wake up? And what time? Do I you wake up, up between days? four and five in the morning. And yeah. before I wake up, I just lie in bed and uh, the night before, before I go to sleep, uh, I do a practice called uh, Yoga Nidra and I meditate on my personal death, which is my next chapter and plan my journey beyond that. And then I ask myself some questions. And when I wake up in the morning, I don't get out of bed for a while. I just download the answers. And... Mm. And that takes me about half an hour. So after that, I do my proper meditation. Then I then do about an hour and a half of yoga. Then I do my, uh, you know, social media and then I'm done. That's incredible. Amazing. You know, it's so many fascinating things about what you just said. Um, I used to be, like I'm sure a lot of people are, um, we wake up in the morning and the first thing we do is we go and reach for our phones. And I don't. We, I don't. You don't, yeah. exactly, right? Which is why I love to hear that. That's why I asked you what you do first thing in the morning, because I find that the minute we wake up, we go to sleep with our phones, we wake up with our phones, and we are immediately faced with this noise, right? Noise of the world, straight away. And, and a lot of it is, is stuff that we, well, all of it's stuff we can't control. Mm. The news feed, this, that, and the other. So it's already putting us in a certain state before we've even started our day. Instead of us creating how we want to start our day. The phone is creating the day for us. Right. So, so when you're doing your, your morning meditation, what, are you setting intentions for the day? What are you doing in that meditation? It's a very long meditation because it's spent about two hours or so. So first I ask questions of myself, uh, uh, like who am I? What do I want? What's my purpose? What am I grateful for? Then I listen to the answers. And then I do some body awareness, uh, some breath awareness, and then I do a mantra meditation. And then I conclude with four intentions, joyful, energetic body, loving, compassionate heart, reflective, alert mind, and lightness of being and healing to the world. Then I'm done. Amazing. I think that it's interesting because I know for me, my practices have changed and evolved so much over the past years. Um, obviously when you have small children, it does affect the way that you're able to kind of start your day. So I always try to, um, I have to remember that I can't necessarily, that isn't the first thing I can do when I wake up because usually one of the babies is waking me up. Sure. So for moms, it kind of shifts and we still have to make that time at any point during the day to, you know, find that stillness and that connection with yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. I think when you have children, the best meditation is play. Ah. We forget to play yeah. as we grow older, don't we? 
people yeah we get like bamboozled it. we get bamboozled by false human constructs like money work hard work driving ambition exacting plans at some point we realize that that's the last refuge of the failure right you know what what concerns me sometimes is is um we're in this world now this day and age the rat race is, has i've never felt the rat race as, as much as i do now because back in the day you knew what your friends were getting up to you'd go to dinner and you'd catch up and say hey how's work and they'd tell you about work and you'd be like oh congratulations good luck with that now we're seeing everybody people we don't know strangers on social media showing us how much they're achieving what they're doing especially now during our quarantine period there's people who are using this time and being so constructive and there might be other people sitting at home going oh god what well, i'm not doing enough i'm not i'm not doing enough with my life uh, and it causes anxiety and depression and how do you how how can someone deal with that how can you deal with the noise from social media i think you have to ask yourself what is your motivation if your motivation is um, narcissism um you could run for president right <laughs> right? right or uh, or you could become a major celebrity uh too because that's what uh, celebrities are all about it's all narcissistic and it builds up their social media and it creates a lot of fans and they, they want to be like you etc mm -hmm. so there's a certain amount of uh, pleasure uh, that comes from that right. but when you get to my, be my age that becomes irrelevant it becomes you know uh it becomes totally irrelevant i use social media i ask myself uh, three questions is it helpful is right. it necessary will it make right. a difference right. in people's lives then i do it when i do it once a day the rest is then orchestrated around what i've done for the rest oh, cool. of the day i mean and and what you're doing is incredible you're spreading this light and and knowledge really it's so much knowledge to the world i mean yourself you 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 qualified as a as a physician an endocrinologist right yeah and so having done that what what was the point where you went there's more i i've done that there's more i want to do there what were you what was your fascination what how did you know that you had so much more in you to offer the world i didn't i mean i trained as a doctor then i became an internist and then i became an endocrinologist with a study of hormones then a neuroendocrinologist which is looking at the brain chemistry at that point i realized the connection between emotions and biological yes. uh, well-being and then that led me to mind body medicine that led me to integrative medicine and that automatically now has led me to ask myself over the years what is the nature of reality is reality what we see and perceive or think mm -hmm. or is something beyond and uh, therefore i'm now addressing major existential dilemmas because at some point every human being every human being experiences what is called existential anxiety and suffering and old age and infirmity and the prospect of death yeah. but unfortunately now covid-19 has brought this to everyone it's not just old people with infirmity everybody's everybody is having existential anxiety and the fear of death to some extent right. now i experienced that when i was 6 years of age when my grandfather had suddenly passed away mm -hmm. i was confused and i said what happened that's why i went to medical school etc etc and uh, right now my only intention for myself and for the world is to explore what i call fundamental reality do we have a soul is there a god Uh, are we just a speck of dust in an infinite uh, void somewhere in the junkyard of infinity if god exists then does god care about us what happens mm. to us after we die so this is what i'm exploring right now it's so beautiful uh, thank you again for sharing all this stuff I, I, you said something there which really made me think uh, you know we try we, we we're told we learn things about karma be a good person be a good person good things will happen to you give donate to charity it will come back it will come back and i truly do believe that altruism is very different to to charity i mean a lot of celebrities talk about oh, I'm, i'm associated with this charity but really it's not truly altruistic because they're talking about the charity and they're getting something back from it so that's a whole other separate thing but i've always been curious about this dr chopra why 
do bad things happen to good people? So Jay, this is a very complicated uh, uh, question and answer. Mm. And uh, I think karma is very frequently misunderstood. Mm. So, you know, people talk about bad karma, good karma, this karma, that karma. But ultimately, karma is nothing other than the conditioned mind. So as soon as you're born, you are conditioned, your mind is conditioned within certain parameters. You're told you're a male, you're Indian or English or American. Uh, this is your economic status. This is your family history. This is your cultural identity. And then everything that you see in the world or perceive is through the filter of that conditioned mind. That conditioned mind is karma, period. Okay, so karma is nothing other than the conditioned mind. Now, you know, since you, I have you, here with me, I just want to, uh, and I'm not doing this to sell the book, but no, no, this no, is my new book. Okay, yeah. it's called Meta Human. Uh, so, you know, what does Meta Human mean? Meta means beyond, and human means the conditioned mind, the karmically conditioned mind. So, as long as you're a prisoner of karma, you are a prisoner of past conditioning, which will influence your future choices. Meta human means how do we free ourselves from karma, good or bad, doesn't matter. You free yourself from all these false constructs. So you are a creator instead of a victim. If you say I'm the product of my karma, then you're a victim. <laughs> and if you are say I'm free of karma right, right. this moment, then you're a creator. The choice mm -hmm. is yours. And that choice only happens if you become the silent witnessing awareness of your own conditioning. Yeah, yeah. I, lo I love that. Can we, can we talk a little bit more about what you were saying about how uh, thoughts and the mind and body obviously is connected. Mm -hmm. So your own thoughts can literally have a physiological response on the body. You can, right? Your thoughts can trigger the, the release of certain hormones. Can you, can you talk a bit more about that for the people who are watching and how you can shift your, your state? So uh, I'll give you an example. You know, when I was a practicing physician, one day I was seeing a patient, I had this chart in front of me, it was a second appointment, and I looked at his chart and I said, Mrs. Smith, I'm so sorry, but I have to tell you something which is not good news. He said, what is it? I said, you have cancer. Mm. And immediately I could see his biology change. Mm. And, you know, I saw that his, uh, uh, he was contracted, his face showed fear, um, I checked his blood pressure, it had gone up. I checked his mm. heart rate, it immediately went up. I could immediately sense that his immune system was compromised and that he was getting inflamed in his body just by that one sentence. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Smith, wow. I'm sorry to tell you I have cancer. Then I looked at the chart again mm -hmm. and I realized that it wasn't his chart. It was somebody else's chart. Oh, so oh said, my God. I'm so sorry, Mr. Smith. That's oh, not you. That was somebody else. Actually, your oh, tests are very good. And immediately wow. I saw his blood pressure came down, his heart rate stopped, <laughs> his immune status improved, inflammation in the body went down. So that was my clue. And after that, I realized that it's not just thoughts, it's emotions and thoughts mm -hmm. and imagination. You know, the worst mm -hmm. use of imagination is what we call stress. The best use of imagination is what we call creativity. So, but that cannot happen unless you are the witnessing awareness in which thoughts are coming and arising. So I don't encourage people to think positively because they get stressed about it. You know, they're trying so hard to think positive. <laughs> to think positive, right. Stressed. So a positive mind can be a stressed mind. You, you, what you have to learn is to quiet your mind. And mm. a quiet mind is a healing mind. That's where yoga and meditation come in. Yeah. Because mm. they quiet in your mind. Absolutely. And when your mind is quiet, it starts to regulate itself. And when it regulates itself, your body regulates itself. That's what we call homeostasis, mm -hmm. which is healing. Right. So obviously, as I said, being a yoga studio owner and a teacher for so many years, obviously I come into contact with tons of people who the first thing they say when they just look at me is, oh, I can't sit still. I can't quiet my mind. And of course, I, you know, I tell them, well, we can work on it. But what would you say to um, 
those people who are coming to you? Well, you can be rude and say, go be a victim. Or you can be helpful. I can't do that. <laughs> okay, so you can be helpful. You can tell them to sit quietly and close their eyes and do nothing only for five minutes. That's it. Mm. Okay, if they can accomplish that, then you say, okay, now let's do it for six minutes. If they can accomplish that, then take them to 10 minutes and now teach them a little breathing and a little reflection. You know, mm -hmm. what am I grateful for? That's very good as a meditation start because when you experience gratitude, you can't have hostility. Yeah. That's a start. Then yeah. you go further, slowly. Take, take people one step at a time. Got you. What, what would you, so I have a friend, uh, I tried to, we were having a, a, a talk about this particular topic where um, he's a cynic. He, he, he doesn't believe in the, oh, you know, uh, you can change your state. He doesn't believe in just by being grateful for certain things. It can, and I said, why don't you believe in it? What is it that you don't believe about this? And he, I think he has related it to some type of some very, time very, of And also he might've had a past experience. Sometimes too, which right, and 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 so I thought to myself, okay, there must be tons of people in this world who, let, for 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 lack of a better word, are jaded, and they've had a bad experience. Somebody they love died. They've been good their whole life, but their mother got taken away from them at an early age. They now longer don't have faith. They don't believe in the universe giving you good things, and they certainly don't believe in God. And they don't want somebody telling them, oh, come on, just be positive and be grateful for what you have. How do you turn those people around? Dr. Okay, so first of all, recognize there's a difference between skeptics and cynics. So a skeptic mm. says, show it to me, prove it to me. I will believe it when you show me the proof. Right. Okay. But right now, I don't believe. That's a skeptic. That's a very healthy attitude, by the way. Mm. That's how I... Scientists are skeptics, right. philosophers okay, are skeptics. They're still open to learning. So actually, he's more of a skeptic. Yeah, yeah. but okay. you're not believing till you have the proof. Now, a cynic them. has already closed their mind. They oh, say, okay. I don't believe it, period, even if you show me the proof. Now, right, right, right. for cynics, I say, okay, good luck, be happy, okay. go your way. For you. okay. okay, for skeptics, yeah. you can show them the literature. Just go on Google, just go on Google, type out, scientific evidence for meditation. And you'll come up with thousands of scientific mm -hmm. references that show what happens to your brain, to your nervous system, to your autonomic mm -hmm. nervous system, to your inflammatory markers, yeah. to your biological responses, to what is called gene activity. We just published a paper in, uh, in a nature journal, which is a high impact journal from England, where we showed that in one week, a retreat of meditation and yoga, People who practice that, genes that activate self-healing and right. self-regulation and homeostasis went up like 17% over baseline. Amazing. Genes yeah. that cause uh, inflammation went down significantly. There's the proof published by UCSD, Chopra Foundation, Scripps, mm. uh, Harvard, you, you name it. I mean, the, the most prestigious institutions of the world. Now, if I show you this and you say, I still don't believe it, right. then okay, go fishing. Right. right, 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 right. That's actually very well explained. That is very well explained because I'm, I'm so interested in all of that stuff. My previous, another life, it feels like when I was studying to be a doctor, uh, you know, and, and just really the fact that our, our mind, I, I like to look at it like a little computer. It's like a little pharmacy, right? And you come over there and you, you, you give you a little prescription and he goes, oh, this is what you need. And he goes and gets the little bottle for you and he gives you little chemicals and you feel a certain way because of it. And that has always fascinated me. And it wasn't until really Tara uh, with her yoga um, got me into yoga, what, a year ago now? Yeah. And we've been together uh, 12 years. <laughs> and he, just, he finally just joined <clears throat> onto the yoga. Wonderful. So here's, let me tell you something. You know, when you have, when you feel good, when you have empathy, compassion, love, joy, peace of mind, equanimity, then your brain, and this is neuroendocrinology speaking, your brain creates uh, things like oxytocin, dopamine, serotonin, opiates, yeah. which also happen to be immunomodulators.
triggers the release of right. cortisol, which suppresses the immune system, and also adrenaline, which causes inflammation in the body. So you can mm. see that just from moment to moment, how what's happening in your mind affects your brain chemistry, and what's happening in your brain chemistry affects your immune and endocrine system. This is called psychomodulation. Okay, right. so uh, we have the science for it, and uh, it's a very profound science. So when you talk about pills and pharmacies, the best pharmacy is inside your head. It, exactly. it makes immunomodulators, it makes uh, antibodies, it makes uh, anti-inflammatory compounds. Uh, this pharmacy, which is inside your head, may, knows how to make the right drug at the right time for yeah. the right target organ with right. no side effects and all the instructions come right. in the packaging right. and the packaging is you. Exactly. That's Amazing. So, right Everything we thing. have yeah. is right here. So I read this, one of your articles actually, fascinating article about, um, well, two things. Number one, I had never heard about this from anybody else, but um, melatonin and its potential use in treating uh, this COVID-19. Can we talk about that a little bit, please? Yeah, we don't want to say anything that's controversial yeah. or could be, uh, yeah. could be, we could compromise ourselves um, right. in, in the melatonin? scientific circles. That's the last so melatonin is a hormone produced by your pineal gland. Right. And as far as we know, its main function is that when you go to sleep, when you get in a dark room, melatonin goes up and it's correlated with the quality of your sleep. This is what we knew in the past. Right. Now mm -hmm. we also know we also know that during meditation, melatonin goes up. And we also know that melatonin is an immune modulator. Mm. So um, is it uh, a good thing? Of course, it's a good thing. Can you overdo it? Of course, you can overdo it. So mm. I personally recommend that people stimulate their own melatonin through meditation okay. and right. sleeping in a dark room. Mm -hmm. And if you have problems, you can take a homeopathic dose of melatonin, like, mm -hmm. you know, 0 0.1 milligram or something that triggers your own melatonin. And right. then in future, we'll see what it does to, you know, people who have cancer, etc. But it, it will not be the solution. It will be one thing amongst many. Mm. Right. Um, do you think, do you think there's no, there's no one thing that is a solution for anything, right? It's right. your entire life. Oh, everything coming How together. You sleep, your meditation. Yeah. Everything coming together. Yeah. Even you, you, there was another article that you wrote, right? About the yoga and meditation and how that can suppress the, um, the overreactivity of overactivity of the, of the immune system. Yeah, overreactivity of the immune system can cause inflammation. And mm -hmm. that's what we call sympathetic overdrive. When you practice yoga, mm -hmm. you do the opposite. You stimulate a nerve in the body called the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve, the vagus yeah. nerve is related to the English word vagabond. It goes everywhere in the body. And it actually counters the effect of the sympathetic nervous system. And vagus nerve is stimulated by pranayam, deep breathing, and yoga. And in fact, the yoga postures selectively simulate every branch mm -hmm. of the vagus nerve to yeah. bring about self-regulation in every organ of the body. That's the science. So this is what happened to me after we had our second child, Aryan, who's about a year and a half now. I wasn't doing my yoga practice as much because I didn't have anyone watching the baby. So I was exercising. I was working out at the personal trainer. I was going to the gym. I was exercising. I was active five days a week. I went back to my yoga practice consistently. Yeah. I'm in the house and he looks at me and he's like, what's going on with you? You're so different. What changed? And I looked at him and I said, yoga. It didn't matter that I was active. I was still active. But yoga has a different effect on you because of that stimulation of the vagus nerve. It's a completely That's different right. experience. How did we figure all this stuff out? Who, how did people know that certain postures would cause the stimulation of, you know, I'm fascinated by all of that too. This goes back thousands of years, surely. Mm. This is pretty recent, you know. There, there, there are institutions in the United States like the FDA and other institutions that approved uh, use of an electrical device to stimulate the vagus nerve 
for intractable epilepsy. Uh, it's, the only, uh, uh, it's the only condition for which vagal stimulation electrically is advised. So they put an electrical implant in the vagus nerve and they stimulate it with, uh, with a handheld device like an uh, iPhone or something. And it helps some, some people with epilepsy. But what they found was that people were getting better from other things like uh, arthritis or hypertension or other inflammatory disorders like uh, uh, autoimmune illness. So they were confused what was happening. And the, it was discovered that the vagus nerve has bi-directional traffic. It travels from your brain. It's in every organ in the body, including the microbiome in your intestine, which incidentally also produces certain opiates and dopamine and all of that. And then it goes back, sending messages to the brain. At this point, uh, scientists came up with what is called the polyvagal theory and wound that when when you practice yoga, when you practice deep breathing, and when you chant, you know, when you chant or when you sing, yeah. you okay. should know this, Jay. When, yeah. when you sing, you stimulate the vagus nerve. Yeah. And that just singing will stimulate the vagus nerve. Yeah. So now we know there's a scientific basis for why people feel better after they sing or they chant or take deep mm -hmm. breath or do yoga. This is Amazing. the scientific basis. It's amazing. I almost feel like we were a perfect design in some sense. Like, you know, we, like you said, we have all of the chemicals and, and stuff inside of our bodies. If we just knew how, if we knew ourselves better, if we knew our minds and our bodies better, if we knew how to tap into ourselves to do that. Can I ask you a question as, as a, I don't know, do you still practice um, medicine? Are you, or do you, or, like, do you, are you, do you still actively practice it or? I am a professor at uh, UCSC Medical School in the Department right. of Public Health. Right. And um, I have a group practice in California with about okay. five or six physicians, but I mostly teach these days. And mm -hmm. when there are patients who have complicated uh, issues, then I consult with my uh, physicians who are part of the group practice. Mm -hmm. Got you. So my question really was gonna go actually to, to medicine. Um, there are there are many people who believe that these manufactured medicines, um, you know, that we don't need them. We can we can heal ourselves through our body. And then, of course, there are other medicine has increased our the longevity of our lives. For so you know, it's done so much good too. When you were practicing, and then you found this now, what you're doing uh, for the rest of your life. Between those two, do you feel like? You have all the answers now. You are so learned. You're, you have so much knowledge. If you ever find yourself having a bad day, somebody's upset you, work hasn't gone right, there's too many emails, there's too many this, there's too much that. Is it immediate for you? Do you know how to immediately do it? Or do you have somebody that you need? This is almost embarrassing. I have no, I don't experience stress, period. I don't it's know amazing. what it is. You know, I hear from other people what stress is. I can see their biological <laughs> responses, but I don't experience wow. stress. I think it's the worst use of our imagination. Wow. So I don't, I don't uh, go there at all. Now, of course, I, uh, it's not true that I know everything. We are always learning. You know, knowledge is infinite and you cannot, mm. the more you know, the more you realize that you know less. Well, you don't so know. pharmaceuticals are very helpful in acute illness. If you have pneumonia, you better take the antibiotic. Meditation right. can come later, right? Right, mm. exactly. If you, exactly. If you break your leg, you need to see an orthopedic surgeon. Exactly. Right? Right. If, you have, yeah. uh, if you have appendicitis, you better take it out. Take it whatever. out. Exactly. Yeah. So there are, there's a role for pharmaceuticals in acute illness. But when we look at chronic illness, now this is a very important finding. Only 5% of disease-related gene mutations are fully penetrated, which means they guarantee the disease. If somebody has a BRCA gene, for example, for breast cancer, they're going to get it. So they might as well do everything to prevent that, even a radical mastectomy like Angelina Jolie did. But that's 5% of all chronic illness. 95% of chronic illness is determined by lifestyle, which means sleep, stress management, exercise, movement, yoga, breathing, healthy emotions, a good diet, right. and 
happy relationships. And 95% of chronic illness is influenced just by that. Mm. Uh, let's talk about, let's say, for example, other emotions. Um, anger. Do you experience anger ever? Does anybody irritate you, rude people? Do you ever get people who might say something to you that gets you, rubs you the wrong way? How do you deal with that? No, not these days. Not these days. I don't I experience anger or anxiety or resentment or grievances or uh, guilt or shame or depression. But I do experience at times frustration that uh, I wish people knew better, I wish they educated themselves. I wish they would be more self-aware Mm. In which case, they would have happier lives and healthier lives. Right, because you understand that when you're going through an experience with someone, that someone else might get irritated with, you understand that they have their own personal work to do. So you're not going to take it on. Because yeah. you're like, that's actually not my problem. So that's right. Just... Well, and also what other people think of you is right. not your business. Right. What somebody thinks of me is not, none of my business. It's their business. Amazing. Right? I love that. I love that. Yeah. Uh, I think talking to you is, is, I immediately feel so much more calm about just things because you, what you're saying is, is an, in essence, common sense if you really think about it. But I think a lot of people don't like to think about common sense or they like to question everything. The one thing I've always found is you say something and some people never almost, they want to prove themselves wrong all the time. They're like, no, but what if that's easier for you to say? And it, that, I feel like they're almost stopping themselves from healing before they've been given it a go. Yeah, so, you know, in a sense, everybody is doing the best they can from their level of awareness. And we're all on a journey. And, you yeah. know, it's uh, wherever you are is fine at the moment. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, listen, when I opened the so, yoga studio, uh, yeah, we, mm -hmm. we just encounter so many different types of people and you realize you have to meet people where they are and we give out yeah. goodness Yeah. and we give them the opportunity to feel good and to feel light, right? And we share that and then those who are ready for it will join. You know, they'll meet where, where they yeah. are. Yeah, absolutely. So listen, before we finish, uh, yes. may I ask you something? Of course. I have, you know, the Chopra Foundation right now is on creating a new campaign called yes. Never Alone. Okay. And the, uh, the website is neveralone.love, neveralone.love. And what we did was we looked at the world situation right now where there's extreme depression, where actually suicide has now become the second most common cause of death in millennials and teenagers. And mm. the world is going through a lot of pain and suffering. So neveralone.love is uh, part of a nonprofit that is connecting people all over the world. And we are asking people to get involved. I'd love yes. for you and Tara to be involved and even share some of your music and some yeah. of your ideas. And actually, I would like to connect you with the directors of the Never Alone program. And I'd like your fans to also know about it. Neveralone.love, nonprofit. Oh, beautiful. Together, together, we can all tackle this problem and help create a more peaceful, just, sustainable, and joyful world. So I'd love for your help. Uh, that will be our time. pleasure. A hundred percent. Thank after you. I, after I'll, I put this up, I'm going to put all the information out and, and also the nominee. Congratulations on the Webby Award nomination. I'm going to make sure. Oh, thank you. That. But you I'm know, also yeah. going to connect you to the directors. Uh, one of them is an English actress, actually, who is okay. now living in Los Angeles. And yeah. she's very involved in this uh, I would love work. That. And then my the CEO who works with me, um, he's from India. I'll connect you both, uh, to both of them. Thank you. That would be our so pleasure. And please, please, it. please promote the Never Alone Dot Love campaign. We will. Our okay. Easy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank for you time. so much for your time. Thank you. Let's meet again we after will. this is over. Huh? Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, definitely. God bless. Thank you. Bye bye. Stay well. Bye bye. You too.